good evening everybody or good morning my name is Petra Batik Frey and I'm a lecturer at the University of Applied Sciences in Zurich in Badenswil and it's really a great pleasure to be here today and to present some of our work so I would like to share my screen with you now that you can see my presentation So here you can see the gardens in Wadenswil, which is where most of our project works actually take place. And you can see that um, we're doing environmental or sustainability communication, which I think is much more difficult than science communication. Because in science communication, you mostly want to convey facts, new information. While when we work in environmental education, we actually want people to think about their own lives, to maybe even change their own da daily habits. So that's a very difficult task. And this is why we use different tools. And I would like to present some of these to you today, um, illustrating them with some of our projects that we have in our gardens. We usually work with the IOOI model, so we think about the impact that we would like to achieve. And in an easy example, say we would like to reduce the meat consumption in Switzerland. Now it's clear that with a simple um, environmental education project, you can't really get people to stop eating meat altogether. There's many different factors that influence how much meat we consume. And in Switzerland, that's around one kilogram per week, so it's quite a lot. So what we can do is we can actually contribute to a reduced meat consumption in Switzerland using some of our projects. So we think a lot about what we could do. We actually produce a project, we make a concept, we try to finance this project. And then, for example, we produce an exhibition, an exhibition that shows what meat consumption means for the environment. And now we have maybe 3,000 people who actually come and visit this exhibition and 80% of them might decide that they really want to reduce their own meat consumption and maybe the next time they go to a restaurant instead of choosing a hamburger or any other meat meal, they try a new vegetarian meal and they might decide that they actually like this version and next time they um, really start trying more vegetarian meals. So just because of our exhibition, we could actually um, contribute a bit to a reduced meat consumption in Switzerland, which was our impact. So we can use this same model also when we talk about detailed goals for our project. For example, um, our soil scientists at the university came to us and they wanted to make a soil garden. So instead of just starting to organize all the learning materials that they have and looking at their learning targets, we ask them for their goals. We ask, so when people leave this garden, what should be different? Will they know new things? Will they do things differently? And they came up and they said, for example, well, they should say they, they should see that soil is actually a very valuable commodity. So why is soil a valuable commodity? And they told us that the soil has many important functions. For example, it works as a buffer or as a filter. It is important for food production. And so we thought, started thinking about how we could um, present these different functions in the garden. Or they told us that the visitor should understand that it takes a very long time for fertile soil actually to develop. And so we thought about combining a soil profile with a timeline. And so we came up with many different elements. But of course, these are just really a few elements. And we started thinking about what could we tell them as an overall story. So here you can see the timeline that's combined here with the, the soil image that we have. Um, here you can see um, some information that we have as audio files on uh, the soil and the different functions that it has. But we thought we need an overall story and we produced a garden, we came up with a garden that's actually a bit hidden behind the hedge. You can see here the hedge in the spring. Here it's in the fall with the dark brown leaves. So it's a bit hidden and 
hidden and the people have to be visitors have to be curious they have to look behind this hedge and then they discover these stairs that actually lead down into the soil so it's a bit like a treasure hunt and the visitors discover that soil is actually a very valuable treasure and they um, can understand this without having to be told using charts and overwhelming amounts of data but just by discovering it on their own and we think that people actually visit this garden they come up with the knowledge that soil is just much more than dirt and you can see here the different images that we used again here we have the this um, soil profile that we have from the area just uh, where we have the garden and you can see that it's really immersed in the the soil itself and to show you what I mean with the um, conveying facts in a way that makes them more tangible without really defining um, them in graphs and charts. This is an example from our grassland, which is another narrative environment on sustainable nutrition. And here we talk again about soil as a valuable and as a very finite commodity. And to illustrate what it means that uh, more and more people actually consume meat we show the factual area that's required to produce one kilogram of corn, which is here the two square meters, then one kilogram of chicken or uh, pork, which is here, which is around nine to 10 square meters, or then the amount of land that's needed to produce uh, beef, which is 27 square meters. And you can see it here more clearly. It's this area down here, these 27 square meters. So it's really a lot of land. And this combined with these circles here, which show the amount of land that's available per person at different times during the last century. And you can see that this area is getting smaller and smaller because there's just uh, many more of us. It really leaves a very impressive and a very lasting impression. So to produce these complex learning environments, our narrative environments, we work in transdisciplinary teams. And you can see here for the soil garden, we worked with the soil scientists, of course, but we also had graphic design, we had environmental education, we had an artist, landscape architect, we had the science uh, communication and the sustainability. Uh, sciences. And in a way, this produced lots and lots of discussions before we can even start into the projects or before we can finish a project. So this is often a very difficult and time consuming um, project that we have. But I think that due to having to incorporate all these different views and visions that we produce something with many layers of information that we have uh, that we can address many different senses and that we also have many different starting points for our visitors or points of interest for them where they can relate to this subject. And I think that this collaboration just produces something much more than each one of us could produce by him or herself. Uh, the project management is quite a nightmare, I can tell you, but um, the results that we see are always just very, very exciting. We use these gardens then also as a setting for teaching. We teach the students at our university, but we also teach uh, high school classes from the surrounding area. And we can see that the settings that we produce, that they actually work for teaching because we did an evaluation of our um, grassland, the uh, narrative environment on sustainable nutrition. And we could show that we can teach them important facts. So it's an emotional learning experience that leaves a lasting impression. Um, but what was more important for us as a scientific, as a university, I think, is that we can show that the students who come to us, that they're afterwards more interested in scientific information, that they talked about the visit at home with their uh, parents and that they were even motivated to really think uh, about their own lifestyle and to um, reflect their own personal choices. And you can see that they even made a commitment. I'm sorry, it's in German because this whole project was, of course, with the uh, Swiss students. 
And these are just the commitments that they made. And you can see that many of them said that they would be careful to produce less food waste, that they wanted to eat less meat, that they wanted to use public transport or bikes more often. So they were really willing to think about their own lives. So our gardens are visited by many different interested groups and we have lots and lots of information in the gardens. But when we analyzed who actually visits us, so when we looked at our audience, we realized that it was very, very hard to, uh, very difficult to reach somebody like Marisa. So a young adult who's not really in interested in climate change or the environment, who's much more concerned with parting with her friends or with her education, or people like Tom, who's maybe a bit younger, but who mostly plays soccer and video games and really has no interest in taking part in the climate debate. These young adults uh, were never seen in our gardens. So we again used our IOOI model and we thought, so what can we do to increase the interest in sustainability in this group of young adults? So again, we put in ideas, work, money, and we thought, you know, these people, they won't come to our gardens because they learn something. They come to our gardens maybe because they can have fun. So we have to combine this fun together with the positive emotions and some learning experiences. And this is how we came up with uh, our newest uh, scientainment project, our zombie mission. The zombie mission is what we call a scientainment project. So there's lots and lots of fun and just a very reduced learning experience with one, basically one main key message, which is meat is bad for the environment. It's a sort of an escape mission in the gardens. It's a race against time where you have to solve riddles in this beautiful setting of our garden. You have to download the app to your cell phone and then in teams of two to four people you can solve the riddles, you can try and save the world by solving these riddles in time. And it looks really harmless and very beautiful on the outside but it's actually very very bloody on the inside. It's targeted at young people who like to watch The Walking Dead on Netflix so it's very scary. But it's not just bloody. It can also show that it works. We have some preliminary results and uh, here we can see that around 80% actually learn that eating vegetarian products has less impact on the environment than meat consumption. 20% learn that zombies like meat, which was not really the point. But we can also show that um, these people had to read the texts very carefully, which is what we want because while the story is completely fictional, the riddles or the information that you need to solve these riddles is not because that's the scientific information that we have in the garden. So by having to read these texts carefully, they actually learn something. On the other hand, they said that it really read like a diary because it's like the scientist who's just followed by these zombies and tries to produce a vaccination. Um, talks to the people using this app. And so by saying that it really read like a diary, I guess it also means that they were really immersed in the story and this again results in a very lasting learning experience. So in summary, using these different tools, the goal orientation, the target group analysis, the storytelling and immersion in a transdisciplinary approach resulting in these narrative environments, we think that we're producing really lasting learning experiences. We're trying to make them interesting and interactive so that our visitors have positive emotions. And we help that this can help improve the transfer of knowledge, that this can help improve the learning experiences and that uh, students not only learn facts that they keep for a long time, but that they are also willing to think about making changes in their own lives. And they're less scared of the science and more willing and interested to learn new facts. So if you're curious about our gardens um, and would like to experience some of our projects on your own, if you're ever in Switzerland, please come and visit us. Our gardens are open unless, of course, there's a pandemic and we have a shutdown. And you are always very welcome to come and visit us here. It's a pleasure to show you around. So it would be fun to meet some of you here in our gardens, and maybe see them make a zombie mission.